Hey everyone, welcome back to Electrology, your go-to place for deep dive explanations in electrical engineering. In this video, we're going to talk about a really interesting and important phenomenon in power systems, arcing ground in ungrounded neutral systems. Don't worry, I'll explain everything step by step using clear diagrams and easy to understand concepts. So stick around till the end. Before we begin, if you're new here, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Electrology. Your support keeps us going. And if you want to make a one-time contribution, hit that thanks button below. You can also become a member by clicking the join button. It really helps us grow. Let's get started. Let's begin with what exactly an ungrounded neutral system is. In such a system, the neutral point is not connected to the ground, which means it's isolated from the Earth. That's why this kind of setup is also called an isolated neutral system or a free neutral system. Let's look at the diagram shown here. As you can see, the system consists of three phase lines, R, Y, and B, and the neutral N is not earthed. Now the line conductors have capacitance, both between each other and to the ground. The capacitances between the lines are delta connected and the ones to the ground are star connected. But here's a key point. The delta connected capacitances don't really affect the earth circuit so we can neglect them. That simplifies the circuit to the one shown next. Let's now talk about the behavior of an ungrounded neutral system under normal conditions. That is under steady state and balanced operating conditions. Assume that the transmission line is perfectly transposed, meaning that each conductor has the same capacitance to ground. So we have CR equals CY equals CB equals C, let's say. Also, the phase voltages VRN, VYN and VBN have the same magnitude and are displaced from each other by 120 degrees. Due to this symmetry, the capacitive currents from each phase to ground, denoted as IR, IY and IB, will also be equal in magnitude. So IR equals IY equals IB, which equals VPH divided by XC. Here, VPH is the phase voltage, or line-to-neutral voltage, and XC is the capacitive reactance of the line to ground. Each of these capacitive currents leads its respective phase voltage by 90 degrees, which you can see clearly in the phasor diagram. Since the three capacitive currents are equal in magnitude and displaced 120 degrees from each other, their phasor sum is zero. That means IR plus IY plus IB equals zero. This tells us that no net current flows to the ground and the neutral point remains at the same potential as the ground. So under normal conditions, an ungrounded neutral system does not pose any problems. But as we'll see in the next part, things change drastically during fault conditions. Now let's discuss what happens when a single line-to-ground fault occurs in an ungrounded neutral system. Suppose a fault takes place on line B at some point F. When this fault occurs, the potential of phase B becomes equal to ground potential. This short-circuits the line-to-ground capacitance CB, which means no capacitive current flows through CB anymore. The capacitive currents IR and IY still flow through lines R and Y respectively. Now the voltages driving these two currents are, for IR, the voltage is VBR. That's the voltage between phase B and R. And for IY, the voltage is VBY, between phase B and Y. These voltages are line voltages. Even though the system is faulted, the paths of IR and IY are still capacitive. So IR leads VBR by 90 degrees and IY leads VBY by 90 degrees. This can be seen clearly in the phasor diagram for the fault condition. Now let's look at the fault current in line B. We'll call it IC. This current is the phasor sum of IR and IY. So IC equals IR plus IY. Now we calculate these values. We know IR is VBR divided by XC, which is equal to root three times VPH divided by XC. Similarly, IY equals VBY divided by XC, which again is root 3 times VPH by XC. So both IR and IY equal root 3 VPH by XC. Hence IC, which is the phasor sum of IR and IY, becomes 3 times VPH by XC. 
That means IC equals three times the per-phase capacitive current under normal conditions. So, the capacitive fault current in line B is three times the normal per-phase capacitive current. This increased current causes the phenomenon known as arcing ground, which we'll explore in the next part. When this kind of fault occurs, the potential of the faulty phase drops to ground level, but the remaining healthy phases rise to full line voltage from their normal phase voltage. This can result in insulation breakdown in healthy phases. The capacitive current in the healthy phases rises to root three times the normal value, and the fault current IC becomes three times the normal per phase charging current. Since the capacitive fault current is small, this system can't provide adequate protection. Standard protection devices might not detect the fault. Also, the fault current IC flows into the earth. If this current is above 4 amps, it can maintain an arc in the ionized path of the fault. Even after the fault is cleared, this arc may continue, leading to a dangerous phenomenon called arcing ground. Here's how arcing ground works. Due to the fault, the system capacitance gets charged and discharged cyclically. This causes high-frequency oscillations across the system. As a result, voltages in healthy conductors may shoot up to five to six times their normal values. These over-voltages can damage insulation and even lead to a breakdown. This whole process, where the arc extinguishes and re-establishes repeatedly, is known as arcing ground. So due to all these issues, especially the risk of arcing ground, ungrounded neutral systems are not used much these days. Modern high-voltage three-phase systems typically use grounded neutral configurations because they come with a number of advantages, especially when it comes to safety and protection. All right, friends, that wraps up this video on arcing ground in ungrounded neutral systems. I hope this helped you understand the concept clearly. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, share and subscribe to Electrology. It really motivates us to bring you more such valuable content. Also, if you wish to support the channel, hit the thanks button for a one-time contribution. And if you'd like to get exclusive perks, you can become a member by clicking the join button. Got questions or something to add? Let's discuss in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.